open AGI. Uh, to begin with, who am I? Uh, my name is Tarun Jain. I'm a data scientist at AI Planet. So it's a Belgium-based AI startup, and uh, I lead the team of the data science team. And uh, I'm also a Google developer expert in AIML, and I've given few talks related to Gemini, Transformers, and everything around it. And I'm also part of Google Summer of Code 2024. Uh, the organization name was Red and Lab. And I was also part of Google Summer of Code in 2023. The organization name was CM Microscope. In my free time, I probably share a few videos on my channel called DI with Tarun. If not, I watch anime and I read manga. And yeah, that's some cool picture that I took last time when I was in Dubai. All right. So before we can jump into agentic workflow, it's better to understand what Gemini can do. What are the different features that one can build using Gemini? Uh, so there are three use cases that I usually enjoy when I build application using Gemini. Uh, the first of them is multimodal. Uh, so multimodal uh, is the feature where if you have any image and if you want to chat with that particular data source, so by data source, I mean it can be image, it can be audio, it can be video, it can be anything, right? If you want to ask any queries which is related to the data, this is where multimodality comes into the picture. And in order to configure this using Google uh, Generative AI, you just have to import the library. And when you run uh, the particular model, you have to define the model name. So here, the model name is Gemini 1.5. So Gemini 1.5 Flash is the latest model of Google uh, Gemini family. So it has the context length of 1.5 context window. And in order to connect both your image source and as well as your text prompt, you just have to feed in the prompt and as well as the image. And when you upload the image, you need to use upload file. So this is the function that you're supposed to use and you need to pass the path in it. So this is one feature uh, of Gemini. And the second feature is function calling. This is one of my favorite uh, feature when it comes to generative AI space. The reason being is whenever you build generative AI based application, you need real time information, right? Suppose if I want to gather the information regarding uh, the Olympics, right? I want to know who is facing who in the upcoming Olympics or who faced uh, Indian hockey team in the semifinals. So this is my prompt. So the prompt is real time. If I want to get gather all the information real time, this is where function calling is used. So what happens in function calling is you have to define a function. Inside this function, you need to give a certain API parameters. So these parameters can be a user query. Based on this user query, you can do certain search. In our case, what we have done is we have defined two function. One is fine movies, one more is fine theaters. And based on that, whatever user query is written, we generate certain response. So this response is being passed as a tool to your uh, large language model so that it can get additional context from uh, real time. So this is where function calling comes in. And uh, it's a pretty amazing uh, feature when it comes to large language model. And you have a complete tutorial on how function calling actually works. So this is the link. If anyone is interested in implementing function calling end to end, I suggest you watch this video. So the link is function calling Gemini. Probably you can take the screenshot. Cool. And uh, moving on with the last feature, which is very exciting is uh, the prompting with video. So one such feature, what many people have started to build in generative AI spaces, the long context. There is a very long context of large language models. How can you utilize this context window? This is where you can feed in very long videos, where you can chat with those videos. If not, if you have a very large set of documents, like suppose if you have around 20 uh, PDFs, which are around 1,000, 1,000 pages. So if you want to pass all the data into your large language model, and then if you want to query with it, this is where long context will always help. And one other alternative is retrieval augmented generation. And these are the two ways using which you can chat with your own data. So this thing, whatever we have spoken so far, it's only related to a normal uh, prompt and you're getting the response. Now, probably how can you leverage this context window? So we have 1.5, 1.5 million uh, context window. We have 2 million context window. What is the use of it? How can we leverage them? This is where the rise of agents comes into the picture. So 
in the 2024 in the beginning of the year andrew venci the founder of coursera and deeplearning.ai he made a tweet saying that i think ai agentic workflows will drive massive ai progress this year ever since this tweet was done many people started to learn agentic uh, workflows they started to build one of them and the rise of agents have gone in a huge numbers there are so many open source libraries available out there there are so many tools which are using agents uh, within their architecture and one of the best example of ai agent is devin ai so what devin ai does based on the user query it uh, decomposes your task and then it executes it so this decomposition of the task and then executing it is one of the major feature of ai agents and let's talk about ai agents in much depth way and uh, when you want to understand certain topic it's better to understand in a very relative way so from now on let's try to understand each and every concept with an example so before we can proceed i'll see if there are any questions okay so let's start with what is agentic workflows by looking into a real time example so let's take an example you want to build an application a software application so whenever we build any app we have certain requirements that we need to look into so these requirements can be the ui changes the back end fixes what are the ai feature that you need to build you have a road map so based on this road map you have certain task that you need to execute so once you have the task to execute you do the planning so if there is a ui fix there is a certain team who will work on ui there is a certain task that will be worked on back end there is certain task that is worked on the ai feature so based on the road map task that you have you plan it and you decompose it so if you look at the flow once you have the task to execute you plan make the decision and you decompose them so the decomposition of the task is the minute detail of the major task and in order to execute the decomposed task as well you have your own expertise by your expertise in the sense you have already worked on the project you know what to build so this is where you use your memory so memory is nothing but your previous experience and then you also have the requirements of tools that you need to use so it can be react programming it can be pytorch framework so for each task you have your own knowledge you have your own previous experience to execute the task so once you start executing the task you have the end result so as you can see once you get the result there is a tester it can be a client it can be a customer it can be anyone he will test the result that you have built for the task and then if he is satisfied ready to give it to the end users as well if the tester is not satisfied you will go back and do the planning you will decompose the task use your learnings implement that get the result so this learning curves keeps happening in the software or it industry right so this is very simple process we do this in entire we actually perform this in our entire day uh, so this is the process of task execution so let's relate this example to a human like agents so what is agent in the first place again let's take an example in a real time so what is real time let's take an example uh, look at this guy do you think it will be hot tomorrow so what you are supposed to do now you want to know whether you need to carry an umbrella based on tomorrow's weather uh, forecast or weather uh, analysis so this is where you have perception so what you do in perception you try to get the inputs from your environment so if the environment is regarding the umbrella whether you need to take the umbrella or not you will first do the case study you will understand what you need so this is where if you look at this particular block diagram in the perception you have the geolocation of your particular uh, locality so based on your locality you will get certain inputs from your perception and then your brain will do the analysis so now that you have the data from the weather forecast now what you will do is your brain will try to make the decision whether you need to take the umbrella or not and there are also chances when your perception is not that great you will also try to use an external tool so external tool can be your 
Google Weather API. So what you will do is you will use this API, get the result from the action, which is your tool, and then you will give it to the brain. So this brain, once it gets all the context, it does re reasoning. So reasoning in the sense, it will do the planning, whether you need to take the umbrella or not. So once the planning is done, it will give the output to the agent and agent will tell you the response. Yes, it will be 42 degree tomorrow. Here is your umbrella. Don't forget to carry it when you go outside. So this is the building block. First, you look into your environment, you do the perception. And if you need any context, additional context, you can use an action. And once you have all the data that you need, you will add your intelligence to do the reasoning and planning. And once you have the reasoning and planning, you have the entire pipeline ready. And this entire pipeline is what you call as agentic workflow. And this is how the agentic workflow actually looks like in a very simple terms. Here you have search. So search is a tool. You use a weather API to get the search results. You use a calculator to get certain calculations. So once you have these tools, you give the context to the action. This action is part of your agentic workflow. Then you have planning. How can a LLM do planning, right? There is a lot of research that is going on on how your LLM can reason itself. So we'll talk about planning in the upcoming slide. Uh, the major focus of my talk will be related to planning. Why? Because tools is pretty simple. Any developer can write an API code. Once he writes the API code, you have the action ready. So memory, it's simply you can use your database and you can uh, use vector database to get the query. But the actual part of agentic workflow is how well can you decompose the task? This is where planning is very, very important in your entire agentic workflow. This is where my main focus will be today to give you some insight on how you can do the planning for the large language model inside your agentic workflow. So here you have a prompt technique called reflection. Then you have one more uh, prompt technique called self-critic. You have chain of thoughts, then you have subcode decomposition. Based on this planning, you are able to get certain observation. Observation is your result. Combining everything is your agentic workflow. This might sound very heavy as of now, but as we go step by step in the upcoming slides, it will be more clear to you on how actually one can build agents from scratch. So this is where the research lies in. I'll only focus on the brain part, which is the planning. The reason I've already said, because action and tools, it's a very developer friendly. Anyone can write the code. The major part lies in the brain. How can a large language model think? How can it reason? So this is where if you look at this part, if you look at this part, okay. So we'll look into the reasoning and planning. And in reason, you have multiple options. You have COT, you have zero shot COT, self consistency. Then you have planned reflection. So inside planned reflection as well, you have multiple research that goes on. So our main focus will be COT, three of thoughts and the react so that it will give you more clarity on what you need to do after this session. Let me zoom my screen. Okay, so now we let's look into a closer look on how a large language model can plan and how it can reason. So we'll start with the planning part. So for planning part, every one of us who is in this call have worked with Gemini or OpenAI before. You just have to give a prompt, you get the response. So there are different ways you can write a prompt. The first way is you have zero shot prompting, the direct prompt that you ask. The second is few shot prompting. So what few short prompting does is you give the context, then you ask the query and then you get the response. One of the best example is whenever you're writing code, right? You get certain error. So what you do, you copy the code and then you ask a GPT or Gemini, Hey, this is the code. This is my query. Can you tell me how can I resolve it? So this is one of the example of few short prompting. If you are directly asking the question, Hey, I want to go to Dubai. What uh, way do I need to visit? So this is a direct prompt. This is what you call zero shot prompting. If you give the context about where you want to exactly be, uh, be there in Dubai. 
so when the context is there this is where you call as few short prompting so these are the two basic prompt techniques that we usually use chain of thought is the advanced version of it so here if you look at the example on the left hand side you have few short prompting you give the context roger as five tennis balls he buys two more cans of tennis ball each can as three tennis ball how many tennis balls does he have now so for this question you have the answer so the answer is pretty straightforward the answer is 11 and then you ask one more question so this is your query so the second part is your query the first part is your context based on this if you look at the result it will directly give you the response the answer is 8 which is wrong right whenever you want to build any llm based application it should go step by step rather than directly giving you the response this is where we have chain of thought if you look closely in your context now when you have the answer it is going step by step rather than directly showing you what is the answer this is where chain of thought comes in so what chain of thought does is whatever query you give it will break down into step let's take another example so that it is very clear to you so here you have a same example using open ai on my left hand side using gemini on the right hand side if you notice carefully i went to the market and brought 10 apples i gave two apples to the neighbor and two to the repairman i then went and brought five more apples and ate one how many apples did i remain with i asked a simple prompt but if you look at the response the first line it starts with let's break down let's solve this step by step so this step by step solution this breakdown of solution is what you call as chain of thought and this is already implemented within your uh, many large language models it can be cloud it can be gemini it can be open ai so this is one of the example of chain of thought reasoning now you have tree of thoughts so let's understand why tree of thoughts why chain of thoughts chain of thought it is good it is able to give you step by step solution but what if this particular step let's suppose you have five step the second step is further decomposed into multiple step how can chain of thought target this this is where three of thoughts come in whenever you do step by step solution if the particular step is further supposed to be decomposed this is where three of thoughts is used let's look into the example uh, the best way to use three of thoughts prompting is when you have strategies when you have to make marketing strategy or any strategy planning if you look at the prompt let's develop a marketing strategy to increase brand awareness of our new product now if you look at the difference between chain of thoughts and three of thought chain of thoughts will give you step by step solution whereas three of thoughts has a root root in the sense is your first prompt for that first prompt how many sub uh, steps that you have this is where three of thought is more inclined towards getting into the depth so uh, how depth you get inside your prompt the better response you get this is where three of thought was better in planning but again if you look at all this research techniques right it's only about giving you better response there is no feedback mechanism how can be human improve be improve only when someone give us a feedback right so far if you have look at this prompt technique whether it is zero shot few shot chain of thought three of thoughts every single prompt technique it is direct there is no feedback mechanism if you notice my slides above i have mentioned something called as agent without feedback agent without feedback now we will talk about agent with feedback so what does agent with feedback do whenever you ask a prompt you get the response it will loop back it will do the reasoning so this is where there is a prompt technique called react so what react does is first it will think so let's go step by step you have thought process based on the user query it will think what it needs to do then you have action so what will action do action will gather the information from external library it can be web search it can be calculator so action it's nothing but a tool you can choose any tool that you need for your use case based on the thought it will decide what tool to pick and what is the observation observation is nothing but your response now what react prompting will do is it will take the observation it will do the thought process again so it's like it's looping 
this thought process will now act as your thought too it will again look into a depth manner it will go in depth and then if it is required any action again it will pick the action it will give you the observation again so this process will continue until you have finish so finish in the sense if the large language model is convinced whether the response was correct or wrong it will stop uh, let's take an example to see how actually we write this prompt so here is a prompt uh, if you look at the first line you run in a loop of thought action pause observation so what is thought it will think action it will think what tools i need to pick then pause pause mainly is used when you want to take feedback from the human so you do the thought process you take the action then you take a pause whether the user is satisfied or not and then you do the observations at the end of the loop you output an answer use thought to decide your thoughts about the question you have been asked use action to run one of the action available to you if you look at the available action we have your available action and the set of tools so these tools can be whether api google search duck duck go search anything and your uh, action use action to run one of the actions available to you then return pause return pause is nothing but i have added to get the human feedback observation will be the result of your uh, result of running those action so this is the set of thought action and observation and then you have to give example so this is where you have few short prompting as well on how the question is given by the user how large language model needs to think and what is the action so here as you can see wikipedia is one of the action that we support and then you have pause then you have the observation so if you look at this prompt what is the capital of france you have france is a country the capital is paris observation is your output so this will repeat uh, this loop you can decide what should be the maximum iteration and once this is done you can also look into the response here i've asked who won t20 world cup 2024 so this slides was prepared for uh, one month ago and during that time i added this prompt and i got the response back it's a real time prompt so the t20 world cup happened in uh, june 2024 and if you ask this prompt to a normal gemini cloud or open ai without any google search it won't answer this but if you use react prompting along with action you're able to get this kind of results which is in real time and with feedback mechanism this is where agentic workflows are very powerful when you have the functionality of reasoning and planning again uh, just to give you a disclaimer it's a pretty early stage of research there are so many advanced techniques as well there are so many uh, techniques which are not better to give the response so this is where there was also one more tweet from andrew venzi ai agents are gimmicky sometimes it is great sometimes it doesn't return what you need so this is just a disclaimer to those who want to build agentic in their production so what are the possible use cases that enterprise can get into most of us the coders we write lots of code and if you are maintaining an open source repository it becomes very important to write a technical documentation this is where if you can integrate your github as a tool to the agentic workflow you are able to generate the technical documentation out of it then you have assignment evaluator assignment evaluator is mainly used when you have certain assignment and the grading mechanism that you need and based on that you can grade whether the student has done better or not then again you have blog writer blog writer is mainly again it's very simple you do the analysis the seo analysis get the data then you have a agent who will write the blog then you have one more agent who will review it so this process of utilizing multiple teams and then executing the task this is where agentic workflows is currently adding into cool now we have the core components but i'll take a pause and i'll see if there are any questions should we take any questions now okay how can we control the hallucination in case when the model doesn't have the data for the answer so this is where for hallucination right uh, you have to have a human in a loop so what human in a loop will do is whenever a agent will do the planning you have the uh, flexibility to grade
pre task planned is correct or wrong so once the task planned is correct or wrong if the human intervention if you tell hey this is correct then it will do the execution and since the feedback mechanism is there the hallucination in the agentic workflows is less compared to a normal llms or rash one thing you need to notice is you have the trade off if you are reducing the hallucination within the agentic workflow uh, the latency will be increased so hallucination is fixed using human intervention Cool. Let's wait for a few seconds. If there are questions, probably we'll take the questions. If not, we'll proceed with the slides. What is the difference between agent-based application and RAG application? So RAG, it's mainly knowledge transfer, right? Let's suppose you have your own data. For this data, your uh, you have two process. One is your retriever, and one more is your generator. You create a knowledge base, knowledge base of your own data, and then based on the user query, you do the search. Search in the sense you have vector search, you have keyword search, which will retrieve the relevant documents from the user query, and it will give it give to the generator, which is your large language model. and then it will generate the response so this is where you have rag which does the knowledge transfer whereas agentic workflow you can you have the flexibility to do weather search uh, the tools you have the wider variety of using whatever tools you need and the reasoning reasoning can't be done using uh, the rag why because you are directly getting the data and then you are doing prompting and then getting the response there are also varieties like you can combine both agents and rag to get your result so i'll talk about how you can build agentic plus rag when i talk about memory component cool uh, so probably i'll proceed now so what are the core components that one can use to build an agentic workflow so here i'll be talking in terms of open agi what are the components that you can use so the first component is planner so in planner you have the prompt that we have written which is your uh, chain of thought prompting and what this prompting will do is whatever user query is given the the task of planner is to decompose it decomposing the task into sub task so once you have the planner it will be given to the admin so admin is where everything will be combined so once the planner is done there might be chances that you need to have the support of action action in the sense tools to get the external information it can be github it can be uh, your drive it can be google search it can be duckduckgo search it can be your notion link anything from where you need to get your data so this is where action is used for example as you can see when a user queries the agent the agent uses a search action to gather information and then process action to analyze it so action is also a part of the tool that you can use to gather the data then you have memory so if you are learning rag rag is a separate topic where you just get the data and you do the search pass the relevant data to the generator and get the response this concept can be used as a memory so how can this be used let's take an example you are building an agentic workflow for product documentation there might be high chances that you have planned 10 different task so now you have a query you have 10 task so there might be chances the 10th task is dependent on the first task right there might be chances there are dependencies between the task so this is where you need to get the relevant previous experience and give it to the admin so this previous experience in order to fetch the relevant part this is where rag is also used within your agentic workflow so that you can get the relevant uh, previous experience for the given user query so this is where memory and rag can be used if not 
there are people who are using SQL to uh, get the relevant information. If not, there are also people who are using vector databases to do the vector search. Vector search or rack probably it's the same thing because the major component within your rag is also a vector database because that is getting you the relevant document. That relevant document is the very important part when you have multiple tasks and when you give this task to the next admin, right? You only have to give the relevant task. So this is where memory and rag can be used. And then comes admin. Admin, you can think of it as an agent. You have the planner. You have your uh, action, you have your memory. Combining all these things, you can give it to the admin. So admin is where all the things will run step by step, where you will plan first, then if required, you will take the support from the action. Then if there is any dependencies on the previous task, you will use the memory, and then it will generate the response where LLM is the core part of your admin. As you can see from planning to task execution and defining the brain, which is what LLM to use and whether or not to use memory. So admin decides what needs to be done. And then we have workers. So this is where we are heading towards multi-agent architecture. So what multi-agent architecture does is, let's take an example. You want to write a blog article. So when you want to write a blog article, the first thing is you need someone to do the analysis of the keyword. What is the SEO? What are the keywords people are searching for? Once the research is done, you have a writer who will write the particular article who knows what needs to be framed. Then you have a evaluator. Evaluator in the sense, he will check whether the written blog article is right to be sent to the public or not. So you have three different teams. You have a research team, you have the writer team, you have the validator team. So this entire team is what you call as workers. Each worker is expert in its own area. So you can define the role. Each worker has its own role. So we have the researcher role, we have the writer role, and we have the validator role. So admin, what it can do is, it can add all these workers within its execution process so that researcher can get the tools, execute it first, pass the observation to the writer. Then writer will take the result, it will process the thought, action, observation, the observation will be given to the validator. So this entire pipeline of using multiple agent is what you call as workers in OpenAGI. So let's look at the pseudo code to give you more understanding of how it can be executed. So I'll probably open my VS code. Is my VS code visible? Okay, I guess the VS code is visible. So here we have DuckDuckGo search. So what DuckDuckGo search will do is, it is the action tool. It will gather the information, gather the information on the Google search. I mean, the normal search. And then you have admin. So what admin will do is, it will combine the planner, memory, large language model, and then it will assign it to the workers. So Gemini is the LLM that we are using. So in Gemini, we will be using Gemini 1.5 flash, which will help us with the larger context window. Then you have memory. So memory, it's mainly used short term memory, short term memory, where we have used rag to get the relevant information for the given user task. So this is where it is very important, right? Why do we need memory? If I am building something, there might be chances that there is a relevant task which I've already done. So in order to get that relevant task from memory, you can use RAG. Then you have planner. Planner is where the task decomposition will happen. Task decomposition of the user query. So workers is where you can define different teams different teams, each assigned with its own role. All right, so the first step is we start with planner. So planner, based on the given query, it will decompose the task. Decompose the task into subtask. 
So subtask, it's nothing but you have the task name, you have the description. Now what you do is you define your large language model. So you can get your API key. In order to get your API key, you just have to go to eistudio.google.com, click on get API key. And once you click on get API key, you just have to click on create new key and you will get your new uh, API key of Gemini. So once this is done, you can paste it here and you are defining your model, which is Gemini 1.5 flash. Then you have Gemini temp temperature, which is 0.1. So how do you define the temperature size? If you want your model to have randomness in the response, it can be close to one. If you don't need randomness or creativeness, you can keep it close to zero. And once you have defined the environment variables, you can configure your Gemini model by just calling load from env config. So once this is done, we will define our workers. So what is workers? As I already said, each worker is a team by itself. So here, if you see the use case that we are building is a customer analysis agent. So what customer analysis agent will do is it will do the market research on Air AirPods Pro and it will gather all the information on it. So the first uh, first worker is customer feedback collector. It will use DuckDuckGo search. It will gather all the information and it will store it, store in the memory so that once the observation of feedback collector is done, it will pass to the data analyst. So if you look at the maximum iteration, this is where I said thought one, action one, observation one, thought two, action two, observation two. So this multiple iteration is defined within your worker. So by this, you might have understood that worker is a reasoning based uh, agent. So worker is using reasoning prompt. By reasoning prompt, we mean react. Whereas planner, since it is decomposing the task step by step, this is where chain of thoughts is used. So planning plus reasoning. Planning is for getting your task done. Reasoning is to execute your task, where react is more so, uh, beneficial because it has the capabilities of reasoning itself. And once the observation of feedback collector is done, it will pass to the data analyst where it will analyze all the data trends and then it will create a report that needs to be given to the user. So gather the information, create the report, give it to the user. And admin is where you combine all the things. So you combine the planner, you combine the action, you combine the memory and the large language model. So once the admin is defined, you have to assign the workers in a sequential order. So first the feedback collector, second the data analyst. So you assign the worker in the sequential order. And once you assign the workers to the admin, you directly have to run query and description. So once you give the query and description and run the particular agent, you will get your response. So I hope the response is visible. Yeah, so we do have the response. It is in the, uh, it's probably in the uh, JSON file and you have the report completely within your title. And this is where it will run multiple times to execute your observation. And you have few more examples, which we have added in our open AGI uh, examples. And you also have a cookbook where you, you will find more examples. So there are different LLMs that you can use. Uh, if someone wants to work with workers, then you can use open AI, Gemini or Azure OpenAI. You can also use cloud. So closed source model are better to run agentic workflow. If you want to run just single agentic workflow, we recommend you to use open source LLMs and you have single agent execution where you can use Grok. So Grok, it's mainly used for faster LLM inference. And you can use any open source model. It can be Mistral, it can be Gemma, any model that you want to choose from Grok. So this is about the code implementation. Uh, I just have added all the code here as well. Uh, probably you will get the slides so that you can refer to this after the session as well. Cool. So this is the repo repository, Open AGI, and you have the link GitHub, AI Planet Hub, Open AGI. If someone wants to build agentic workflow, you can scan the QR code as well.
So I'll just wait for a few seconds until that you can scan the code. So it's a GitHub, it's completely open source. And yeah, if you want to get access of the entire slide, you can just uh, enter bit.ly GDG Dubai Gemini Talks, uh, Gemini Agents. And these are my social feed. If in case you want to connect with me after this session where you want to discuss more about LLMs, RAG, 